Hey, how are you doing? Um, it's really weird for me to kind of plan to do a live on here. So it's like eight o'clock. So wait a couple of minutes for people to come in, if anyone's coming in. If we do come in or if you're catching a replay, just say hashtag replay and then it'll kind of uh, let me know you were here. Um, so this is about like, um, I do lots of random lives, don't I? So if you get anyone who comes on, just say, hi, who you are? Yeah, yeah, that'd be really cool for me. Be amazing. Right. So I decided that, um, after I did a workshop on Wednesday, um, and it was looking about, hi, hi, everyone say hi when you come in and it should, should show up, say hi in the comments. It'd be amazing. And the more you comment, um, the more this gets shown to other people. So if you write hi, 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 then other people will get told that I'm doing a live and then more people can join in and it's a party. So hi, Clelia, how you doing? Thank you. So anybody's here, just say hi. That'd be amazing. Hi. Hi, Kate. Hi, Frankie. Gosh, how are you? No, Friday nights uh, aren't so interesting <laughs> if you're coming to see your Auntie Lucy to, talking about control. But thank you very much. Well, um... It's really good to see you. So I decided to do this um, a little bit more um, planned than I usually do because it was really important. A lot of stuff came up on Wednesday. I did, um, in case you don't know, I do workshops and stuff, free workshops for people. Um, and it was about how to sort of get toxicity out of any relationship, be it partners, kids, parents, food, whatever. Um, and what the first thing I kind of dived into, dove in, what's the best grammar? Grammatically dove dove into hi i look amazing oh my god frankie like i've got no makeup on i've been walking all day like walking barefoot amongst the trees hi jules but thank you what have i got makeup on I look loads better frankie says you you hot thing anyway i guess my niece can talk to her like that but thank you very much i do look slightly rough but no, do you know what thank you <laughs> that's all i need to say wasn't it um so um a big thing that came up was control, right? Um, hands up, anybody who's struggling with somebody controlling them or you don't feel in control of your life or you feel out of control, like everything is just taking its, um, everything's just going crazy and you, just, you, you can't get a handle on. So it, it could be everything or it could be one part of your life is just driving you nuts and you can't seem to get a handle on it. If that's the case, uh, oh, it's great to see you, Julie. Great to see you, though. And Clelia, already good to see you. And Frankie. So, um, and anyone who watches the replay, because some people will, because some people go out on Friday nights at 8 o'clock. So that's cool. Just write hashtag uh, replay. So what actually is control? Well, control, um, ultimately, we think it's, we build it up to be this huge thing that we want in order to be happy or this thing we haven't got. Like it's this thing. And it's not. I think it's it's completely fictional. It's completely phew, control is nothing you can hold. It's nothing you can claim. There's nothing you can take off somebody. Control is entirely fictional. Um and the illusion of control is what you give yourself. And the illusion of what control you do not have is also something you give yourself. So control or lack of it, which seem, which it, on the you know, if you're feeling like you don't have any, that is a thing you are telling yourself, a belief or a, a thing you are telling yourself because you have as much control as you want, or you believe you are capable of having, or you believe you have, or, or actually you believe you want in some cases. So first of all, control is not a, is not a hard thing. It is a, it is an illusion. But what is it? Because we know it might be just fresh air, but so are thoughts and feelings. It doesn't mean that they don't mean something. So control is really simple. There's four elements um, to control. There's thoughts, feelings, um, well, it's just there's four elements to the things that you as a human can control. Now, if you're here on Wednesday, you could probably tell me them yourself, right? They are actions, your actions, your reactions, your thoughts and your feelings. Everything else is not in your control. 
So if you feel out of control, um, if that, that feeling of, oh my goodness, it's happening to me, it'll be because either one or more of those things, your thoughts, your feelings, your actions or reactions are not feeling like they're, they're sitting very well with you. Um, so if you feel like you can't think straight, like you're like someone is telling you what to think and you can't quite get your head around it and it's all in your head. Yeah, that will be because what you are in control of that. And if you don't feel in control of it, ah, um, if you feel like someone's making you do something that can feel, but no one can make you do something. Um, and if you're feeling like um, people are trying to make you feel bad, that will be the same. Um, and yeah, and if you're being coerced as well, that, that, that's all the, the control is control is such a huge, huge thing. And when we feel out of control, those are the four things we need to look at first. So the first one is your reactions. Okay. Um, and reactions and responses are, are, are things that we are, we do because of somebody else or in after someone's done something, we either react or respond. But they're quite different. So reacting is a knee-jerk, emotional, belief-led reaction. So somebody says you look fat, boof, uh, what do you mean, blah, blah, blah. that's mean, cry, whatever it might be, you literally are, that hits a trigger, a trigger which is uh, put there by a limiting belief, we'll do that in a minute, um, and then you react, as you always have reacted, in a very knee-jerk, like, boom, that's that's it, I'm reacting like that, because that's hit my trigger, bam, I'm going to cry. Um, a response is, hang on a sec, someone's, ugh, do I need to react to that? Is that something that's a, a measured react response? Is a measured response to somebody, which generally happens after about 10 seconds. You can actually measure a response. So it's actually the completely calm, composed response to someone's behavior or someone's actions. Okay, so reactions are those knee jerk panicked modes so that's always based in belief, in our beliefs and what we believe to be true. What do we think that person's telling us? I still do it. Um, people do it all the time. They react in a knee jerk. That's what I think it means. Um, yeah, M my son uh, did it. It was doing it at the moment because he's he's pretty angry at somebody. So he um, every time he thinks he's not being listened to, he goes, "Oh, that no one, no one listens to me." So what they do is just ah. Oh. But because the minute he sees the possibility that someone isn't listening to him, because it's triggering something in him that makes him feel icky. Boom, he's reacting in in a way that might not be entirely on his belief systems. Okay, so we're working out why does he believe that and trying to counteract that. Okay, so the way to, um, the reason, right, before we go, the reason I'm so passionate about control is because I was having panic attacks all the time. I used to suffer massively with panic attacks. Uh, my weight fluctuated. I, I would use food. I was uh, having eating disorder, so I'd always use food as a as a way of getting control of my life, things like that. Um, but, you know, a, a bit of a string of relationships that were based in controlling me, um, in which so I used food and I used other ways in which to counteract that. So this is why control is such a huge thing, because it, it, it feels like it, it, we can be controlled when, when we can't. We need to, well... It feels like it, but we can choose to step away from that. Um, I'd grasp at anything to get control. And the more like, imagine if you're like drowning, yeah, and you're trying to grab, 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 grab. You're, you're literally, that's the panic. That's the, oh my God, I'm going to die. If I don't grab onto something, the panic wells up. And that's when you feel like you're losing it. You're losing control. So you'll grab onto anything, even if that thing is going to kill you quick, even if that's like a shark, because you're not even looking what you're grabbing at. Um, and that in life, if we feel at, like out of control, sometimes we make even worse decisions because we're looking for a way out. We're looking for the, the, something, anything to save us when actually who <laughs> brownie points, but who's the one person who can save us when we're drowning? The one thing we can do is take a breath, Flip on our back and just take a minute. If we ever, if rather than panicking and grabbing onto anything that could actually cause us even more harm, actually what we need to do is not be in that panicked response. But yeah, so panic, panic attacks. Um, 
I was miserable, really, really miserable in a relationship where I was being, um, if you've been in any kind of uh, controlled sort of relationship, where I was being kind of manipulated like with my thoughts and did that even happen? I was being gaslighted a lot. So you feel like you're going mad anyway in that. Um, and then I kind of found um, that it was my beliefs that were causing that and I found something called EFT. So, um, and then I realized that when I dumbed down my, my knee jerk reactions and my panic to everything, I realized it was actually all in my control. Um, so I did a lot of tapping. <laughs> Anybody who knows me knows you do tapping. And it's the first thing, it's like the symptom management. It gets all of that, it brings everything down in order to, oh, so, um, some of you have done quite a lot of tapping with me, um, quite deep tapping, um, then you'll know that it can be quite deep. But I also do that symptom management where you're in the moment, oh, tap, 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 tap. Okay, get all those things out of your body. You do that and then you can work on the rest. So when I when I found EFT, I not only did I d diminish my um diminish my symptoms i actually was able to just fly i only went in to try and find something to stop me feeling so shit it ended up not just stopping me feeling shit but making me just just flying and being able to cope and being able to do so much more and that's why i want to bring it to you so that's why i'm quite that's why control is such a big thing for me um i read lots of books on it i read lots of books about control and and how to get control and the things that resonated with me was that everything that i do and think is mine and i like to make things really simple right i like to make things super duper clear um so that it's easy to implement so if you are in control of your actions and reactions so to get control of your reactions in all honesty it's getting rid of those knee-jerk reactions to to get over those knee-jerk reactions it is to when you feel that trigger so when it feels like it's going to your gut someone's punching the gut and you want to just say <gasps> is a case of it's a case of hand on heart and it's breathing and it's tapping you might look people might think you look mental I don't even ask you to say any words. See these points here? You just tap. All right. I do like I um I do teach how to do tapping like, all the time in my uh, membership and um courses and stuff. Um, but I'm just these are the just you really really basically go through the points. So inside I okay. And after a couple of rounds of that, you will just be able to diminish. So your reactions, your your reactions, you can very quickly bring down. Okay, because saying nothing is one of the most powerful things you can do. In a moment, in a moment when somebody is trying to trigger you or you are being triggered by by something and it is going to be a real knee-jerk reaction, the best thing you can, the most powerful thing you can do is say nothing. Literally 10 seconds, tap, tap, tap. Yeah? Okay. Now... I hear a lot, they made me do it, or they make me feel this, or I feel so helpless, or when I was younger, they did this to me and it made me that. I was like, do you know, yeah, shit things happen to people. In my line of work, I hear a lot of what horrible, awful things happen to people. Awful, horrible things have happened to me, and awful, horrible things happen to people. And things that are not so awful and horrible affect people too. So um, things that might not seem awful. So actually you feel a bit ashamed. How can somebody um, who stole my yoghurt in, I don't know where that's coming from, stole my yoghurt in primary school, how can I just have such an effect on me? So whatever you are feeling upset about and stuff, then you do need to um, not judge stuff that, that actually triggers you okay every time i see bloody lindsay cartwright in a fucking yogurt i want to just it makes you boils your blood yeah so it doesn't have to be massively traumatic or it might matter whatever triggers you is, is yours and that's okay too um where was i going with that so um uh yeah when we um when we have thoughts and feelings about um yeah so our thoughts so our actions and our reactions 
um and not only so that was our reaction so so I'll, I'll, I'll recap so back to our so our react so our, our, we've said our reactions haven't we and our responses then it's something that we do now things that we do are also um can be why are you doing that if you're if you're doing something that you don't want to do for example uh, because you feel obliged or because you feel it's the right thing to do that's a story you're telling yourself so if you are doing things that aren't inherently aren't in aren't holding you in integrity and i mean integrity as in it doesn't complete you it doesn't it's actually making you feel less of you by doing something um example i was meant to go to devon a couple of weekends ago but somebody didn't know very well all felt really icky right um so i just said oh do you know what I'm not going to go because it just doesn't fit. Something feels wrong. I was entirely in integrity. I felt so much better saying it doesn't feel right. Do you know for all these different reasons? I just I feel that I need to stay. So my my actions meant that I actually I, I, I followed the path for me and not what I thought I should do because that then breaks down the integrity and in how high a regard you hold yourself if all of a sudden you start be being and doing things purely for other people's benefit because you don't also have a right to take that away from them and that sounds really nuts but if you start doing things that you think people want you to do or behaving in a way that you feel you should because of somebody else that is really lacking. You're not giving yourself or anyone else the chance to be themselves, if you know what I mean. So if you think, oh, well, I better do that. I better, um, I better go out and do that. Or I better go to that place. Or I better do what I've said I'm going to do. Otherwise, I'm going to upset somebody. I think, well, actually, I would rather, I'm sure you would too, I would rather somebody came to have coffee with me or came to have dinner with me who wanted to be there, wasn't obliged to be there. Because... If you don't want to be somewhere, or you don't feel like it's the right thing for you, doing it because you think you should, is quite, it leaves you lacking yourself. And actually, it might say, well, you, you might see if you can take this or not, but it, the only, um, the only job, the only task of you, I covered this in my course last night, we were doing um, Egos and Boundaries on Wednesday evening, um, that was our, that was week five, Egos and Boundaries, quite an in-depth, in-depth kind of, um, an in-depth uh, discussion about ego and boundaries and how we diminish our ego, but if you, um, what was that? Oh, gosh, I keep losing my track, um, if you, I've completely lost track now, we'll come back to that, um, Okay, because so if, if you can remind me where we were, let me know. <laughs> Just type in where we were and, I'll, and uh, I will come back to it. Um, the next things are thoughts and feelings. So when we have a thought and when we have a feeling, they are 100% ours. Okay, so and again, they hurt my feelings. Well, they might, but that's your choice. And you have control over how you feel and think about something. So say um, one of my clients says, yeah, but she said to me the other day, well, when when I, um, when I someone phones me, I know they've got better things to do. I think, oh, no, no, don't phone me. Go and do what you need to do. Don't you speak to me. I'm fine. I was like, well, you you made the at your your you made the choice to pick up the phone now you know it's your friend she wanted to speak to you you don't have a right to tell her that her actions were wrong you decide what you do if your actions and are to pick up that phone then you pick up the phone then her response hers is a hers and it's the same with your feelings and your thoughts so if you if someone wants to hurt your feelings that is up to you whether you allow it. If somebody wants to say, oh, you don't look very good today. You think, firstly, who says that? Um, you look a bit rough. <laughs> okay, cool. So that is something that they're needing. Because do you know so what I teach my kids, right? <laughs> really basically, if somebody is feeling really good, it's really hard to be mean or say anything horrible, or to be negative. It's really hard. You mean you think back, a day you felt really amazing, did you not just want to spread the world with sunshine and tell everyone how beautiful they were, yeah? 
So if people are saying things to maybe hurt or to maybe um, to maybe make you feel bad, that to me says that they feel bad and that they want to bring someone else down. However, quite a lot of people are quite intuitive, so they'll know what triggers you to make you hurt and bring you down. If that does that make sense? So what you need to do is realize that it's all them. <laughs> So, okay, they can't make you feel anything because that's they're literally projecting their emotions onto you. And always think it's hard. It is really hard to be horrible to somebody when you're feeling nice, to even insult somebody. Because when you are full of love and roses, that's kind of all you see. I mean, it really is. The only time I ever feel a bit um, shitty about something or kind of, oh, fuck's sake, is when I'm feeling really shitty. And any time I feel resentful or like, oh, God, uh, I can't remember, it's when I'm feeling shitty and resentful. And and then it's just a spiral, isn't it? So that's how I know you cannot, it must be about them. Um, but like I say, intuitive people know where to hit you. Um, if you're with, like I say, I was with, uh, I've been with several sort of narcissistic uh, traits of people in my in my in my life, um, and they're very intuitive, so they know where to where to hit you where it hurts. You might have friends who are like that, who know just how, you know, say, so, my gosh, isn't that poor? Oh, bring I'd bring down the mood. Uh, Because they know how to bring things down when they're feeling bad because it actually makes them feel not so alone. So, you know, they are feeling bad, but the best thing you can do is keep your vibration high because if everyone's low, who's going to bring them up? And I had a really amazing stat on Wednesday as well that when you're full of love, you can affect 750,000 people people when your vibration is love when your vibration is fear or below fear to shame you can't affect anyone else but you but you can't affect anyone else but you so you you if you keep your vibration high the the likelihood is other people will be able to follow suit okay so um and your thoughts okay your thoughts i i feel that thoughts um thoughts and reactions are the, are the things that can be more, even more tricky because feelings that like, well that's that's hurt my feelings well that's that's a choice I don't want to feel that therefore I'm going to feel better and you can think happy thoughts again I teach people how to do heart math breathing and stuff like that where you actually just bring the thoughts and if we've got time I will absolutely show you some heart math breathing it's really amazing um with the thoughts thing, you you are entirely control of your thoughts, um, and you get to decide what you think. And thoughts are powerful. Um, if anyone's ever read The Secret, um, a lot of people take it a little bit. In my opinion, a lot of people take it the a little bit the wrong way sometimes. But um, thoughts are literally messages. Uh, they're like magnets. So if you imagine um, you have got everything you're thinking, you're going to attract more of into your life, if that makes sense. So um, everything you think, oh, I feel really fat and ugly today. You're going to struggle to see yourself in any other light because that's all you see. Not only that, but if you want to lose weight and you're thinking, I'm so fat, I need to lose weight. That's what you're going to get. You're going to get fatness and the need to lose weight. So it's a, it can be a little bit more, a little bit more to try and shift your thoughts around it. But also that is based in beliefs. Which how do we know how we get to our beliefs through tapping? Tapping is the ultimately amazing. It is the way to absolutely lead the life you want to lead it's with EFT and tapping I literally hands down I just such a love of it it is just the way to do it um so just sorry I do bang on about it but it really is but with so any thoughts you have about yourself will be a belief now you might be overweight you might uh good to have a big nose you might have uh dodgy feet whatever it is about you that you don't like that is a belief about you, but what are you making it mean? Okay, so you might be a bit overweight, but why is it? Why does it have to mean something so awful to you? Um, that'll be a belief somewhere in your system that you know you can get out. But also, if you start loving what you see in the mirror, you'll start loving what you see in the mirror. Be- 
if you start saying, yeah, I'm, oh, wow, the, the weight is falling off me, it's great. If you start loving yourself and seeing yourself in the way that you want to see yourself and talking to yourself as that person you want to be, I kid you not, it starts happening. If you want to start, if you want to say, oh, it, oh I'm so stupid, I'm so, oh, oh, I never have any money, oh, no one's ever going to love me. Honestly, that's what you're going to get. If you have these negative role of thoughts, that is what you're going to attract. Magnet, it's literally magnetizing. You agree, Jules, do you? <laughs> reacted so it's pinging i can't turn off my notifications though, so they're really loud <laughs> um and um so it, it literally is an attraction it, it, it's the law of attraction it's the same as gravity and if you it would do not everyone believes in gravity anymore but um it is a, it's a universal law right what you what you what you put out you get back um now not only do thoughts let I me mean, what the coin i first and I'll, I'll let you have this thoughts become things yeah but words give them wings so when you think awful things yeah about yourself or about the world when you start speaking them you're literally bringing it into existence okay now that is that's amazing. Do you know why it's amazing? I mean, you've probably seen it in your life. You know, you say something. Oh gosh, yeah. Me, I attract losers. Do you attract losers? Yes, no. Well, yes. There is a string of losers you attract. If you start, um, think, do you know what? I'm so poor. I would never have any money. You'll make sure you never have any money. If you start, going, oh god, I love. I love how abundant I am when it comes to cash. I love that cash flows to me easily and with uh, from from any direction with grace and ease. Literally, my mantra I say every morning is money flows to me with grace and ease from every direction for the highest good of myself and others in my world. I say that because it does, and I believe it does, and uh, it does somehow, it all does, and I don't hold an attachment to how. All I know is I sit in my genius zone. I sit and do exactly what I was born to do, and somehow the rest of it just happens and I believe it so much that it does does that make any sense I also decided that I I loved my body but I was I was feeling like oh do you know I was, I'm really feeling bloaty so I was getting really bloaty all the time I thought do you know what no I'm not I'm not bloaty I am feeling great my, my body is all blah 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 and then I got the inspired action came and this is what happens when you start thinking the way you want to think thinking about yourself or anything the way you want to what then happened was a uh, real real turn happened last week a friend of mine got in touch AJ lovely chap he then said oh were you gonna do that fruit detox I was like oh yeah I was here you go then, uh, go and get this stuff and uh, start it today, you're a bit late but don't worry about it, I'm still doing it over a week later and I feel amazing and it was it was because I knew how to feel like that, I then knew what I needed to do but if I was stuck in the whole, I'm bloated, oh, I'll eat more bread, that'll make me feel shitter and I'll just stay in the bloated, so if you keep thinking like you're always going to think, you're never going to get any different. Now, the beauty of that is if you can see that pattern in your life that all your thoughts have led to what you've got, all your thoughts can lead to what you can get. So if you want to be utterly free, if you want to have control and say, I am so in control of my life, I make life easy. So we are not only do we tap for like um, to get the shit out, I also tap make this easy show me ease, show me grace, show me. And I literally just tap in the affirmations as well. And I was I was watching another EFT, I cannot remember her name, I will um, credit her when I find her. Um, and she was just like, yeah, especially for those of you busy minds that do a lot of blaming and shaming in the moment, you think, make this easy. Life is easy. And you're literally tapping in 
what you want to feel yeah so it's a really great little thing that i will um again i'll be teaching that in our society the, the tap the crap out of that society is so cool um so excited that starts uh what a week on tuesday um where we tap as a group because it actually a lot of people forget right they think how can tapping work you're not doing anything and they actually completely underestimate the power of it so don't do it and then things you know, things go, oh, and oh. it's like, you know, it's like I had a shower once. It was amazing. It got me really clean. So what, you're not doing it again? Oh, okay. Right, just that once then. Huh? Okay. I, I did. I did I did that. I went to the gym once. Yeah, it felt amazing. Felt it really good. Right, so you just, you give up. All right. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, you have to keep it up. You have to keep it up. So that's why I set up the society so we could all keep up the tapping and get do emotional emotional um, cleansing. It's just friggin' amazing. Anyway, I digress. Sorry about that. I love it so much. So um, because I know how much it helps. Anyway, where was I? So if you then stop, sorry, start thinking the thoughts and saying the words that you want to see and you want to feel in your body and actually then really start you know I'm a bit of a goal setting bunny I love goal setting but if you really start believing it and saying it and seeing it everywhere and setting those goals around those things then you start the thoughts will just become natural now one thing that people do when they start thinking positive things and they go oh actually they get a little monkey come in and change the thought. And then they feel guilty about that. So you see what happens. All of these, so you can be like, you know, I'm on the, I'm on this. I'm, I'm thinking good thoughts. I'm thinking what I want to think. Um, but actually those evil monkeys, oh no, 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 I can't think something bad. You can think negativity. And that's when you do the tapping. That is a whole nother thing. Uh, well, that's a whole nother night. But don't then shame yourself when you think negative thoughts. Just hold on to try and hold on to that to that positive thought to the the, the thought of, of what can be for slightly longer um and each time you just hold on to it a little bit longer and feel it in your body feel it where you feel it and, and always tap but feel it where you feel it um so when we talk about losing control I know that that brings a real panic into my body and makes me grasp. And really, really, when you feel you are losing control, try and figure out which one of those things. So tapping is the key. Uh, Jules, to Julie, I keep calling you Jules. Tapping is, cap tapping is the saviour. Tap on everything. Like when I... Um, Especially in the moment, um, if I, I still get triggered in some situations, um, situations with family and stuff, we're not sure, oh, God, all of it. I, I do tap, yeah, I do tap a lot, um, but I tap for different reasons, for different things. If I'm like, do you know what, that's really, uh, that's bothering me right now in the moment, I tap. If I'm having a tricky conversation, I tap. And I also tap on the big stuff that comes up. Um, less of that comes up. I've been doing this now. I've been tapping on myself every day for four years. So I'm um, less and less stuff comes up. But, you know, it's there's always there's always stuff to get rid of. It's great. It's like a little clean out. So tapping is key. But there's also the understanding. When it comes to control, there's the understanding that one of the biggest ways in which I relieve myself of pressure and guilt so I go somewhere and I know that I am only this life this is what right I'm getting back to it now <laughs> I'm going back to my ego thing <laughs> in this life when it comes to what we are responsible for our actions yeah the only thing we are responsible for is making the best decisions for ourselves okay we cannot we cannot control other people as hard as me might want to, and as much as we might want them to change, and we want them to do something that we, and we want them to care more, we want them to do more, we want them to be better people, we want them to look better, go to the gym, eat healthier, I don't know, whatever you want them to do, you cannot control anyone else, anyone else's feelings, thoughts, 
actions and reactions. Yes, as we see, it can happen and we can have master manipulation going on, you know, and, uh, and neurolinguistic programming, but that's programming. That's that's very different. So we're not going to, again, that's a whole other session. When it comes to control and your actions, you are in charge of your actions alone. Okay. You can only act in the best interest for you. Now that might go, whoa, but if you start acting in the best interest, what you assume other people's best interests are, whoa, you know, you are going to get it wrong. And not only are you not holding yourself in integrity, you're certainly not holding anyone else. You're saying that they cannot make their own decisions that's best for them either. And what it does is you literally show up entirely as yourself. But be prepared that not everyone will like it. So when you show up making decisions, doing things entirely for you, for the best, for your world, for your life, you show up as somebody who is entirely in integrity, who is who is there because they want to be there and who um, is not doing anything out of guilt or obligation to anybody else. And do you know something? It makes you an incredibly wonderful person to be around because you are there with no ulterior motive. You don't want to change anyone else. You are literally there because it's good for your world. And people will want to be, I mean, I know um, I go to some park meetings on, on a Sunday morning and I turn up there absolutely like I want to be there. And people talk to me and I talk with them. And I, But I've got no ulterior motive other than to be somewhere that I enjoy going. I don't go there because I feel I have to. Or the obligation is that I have to go somewhere because that's what I'm... Oh, I've said I'm going to do it, so I'll do it. Yeah, you know, it, if you agree to do something, it's, it's lacking in integrity to back out the last minute for... I oh, can't be bothered... But if you hold yourself and you're and if you hold yourself in high esteem and you do things that are for the best for your world, I kid you not, when you start doing that and you don't then think, oh, that person's a bit iffy, I wonder if it's something I've done. Nothing to do with you. This is where we go into ego though. This is a little bit on the verge of ego. When you realise that you cannot cannot affect anyone else unless they are already feeling it if somebody wants to be angry and you happen to rock up they will be angry at you if somebody wants to feel bad about themselves you rock up oh why did you say that that made me feel really bad you can't do that to anyone they are choosing to because of their beliefs because when you feel bad and you feel shit that's because of your stuff so when you go around and someone's in a foul mood and they're having a go and they're doing this and they're doing that, it's nothing to do with you. And I, I'm i not kidding you, it doesn't half make things a lot clearer because there's no guilt going on. There's no, oh, why are you doing that for? Uh, okay. You know, you really are there in utter integrity and there's no kind of, oh, I wonder why they're doing that. Well, I'm sure they'll tell me if they want to. And if I say, are you okay? Yes. Okay, cool. I don't go fishing. I don't think, well, obviously they'll tell me because they're a grown up or they're not a grown up. Or, you know, I'll ask because I care if somebody looks unhappy, but I'm not going to make it mine. Because if I have to keep asking, that's my need for information. That's about me again. And if they want to talk, they'll talk. If me nagging someone's making them, then all of a sudden it becomes their, their, my responsibility and it all gets all inter intertwined. And I'm not giving them the chance to to ask for help which is a real gift if you learn to ask for help my goodness it is the hardest and the most courageous can you help me is I think one of the most courageous things you can ask and especially now please help me and I teach my kids to ask for help often um without shame or guilt or judgment so um when we are feeling out of control and bear it, be, be, be fully aware, I used to feel it all the time, like so, so completely like, like I, I, I like, I mean, I mean, I'm literally shake all the time. I mean, I would just shake. It would be awful. Um, I now know that when you literally get your side of the street entirely clear, when, when, so, when, and when something's pissing you off, when somebody's upsetting you, no. That's probably, especially as a woman, 
um it's more as a woman if someone's pissing you off oh my god i didn't get the fucking milk on the way home you literally i mean really is it that necessary so really what you need to ask is what have i not done for myself today because when we start getting antsy and icky and people are pissing us off for little incidental things it is 99 percent of the time it's because you haven't honored yourself you haven't said what do i need today what do I need? What is it that's lacking in me that makes me want to lash out at somebody else for, for not doing something? Because that's not nothing to do with me. That's not in my control what they do. It's nothing to do with me. What have I done and what do I need to do for me to make that not a thing? Does that make sense? Um, okay, so reactions actions reactions and uh, reactions and responses. So when you react, that's knee jerk boof responding is um a calmed measured response it's saying you might have triggered me so my trigger is that thank you trigger i'll deal with you in a, in a minute <laughs> i want to respond to this sometimes the response is nothing that can be powerful sometimes the response but if it's measured but notice when you want to go when you want to like lurch forward and react either emotionally or physically you want to lurch literally the best thing you can do is tap and breathe I'll quickly teach, I did say I'll teach you heart math breathing. So heart math breathing, the easiest kind of breathing you can do, knowing that your heart literally tells your brain and your body how to behave. Okay, so your friend admitted to mugging me off. What do you mean by that? Sorry, Julie. I'll let you respond. I don't, I don't want to pretend to know what that means. Mugging me off. That's a really good like turn of phrase, though, isn't it? What did she mean by, what did she do roughly? It'd have to be too in depth if you don't want to, but mugging me off. Just want to make sure I get the, the context right, that's all. Mm. Well, I. Um, okay, if you can respond, that'd be really cool, but don't worry. I'm not attached to you doing that. See what I did there? Uh, okay so if somebody um t oh my god so she even said to you mugging me off okay so i work with that okay so uh someone's actually said to you i did that it wasn't very nice yeah i've been a bit mean to you yeah yeah so you felt hurt i can understand that um her words she kept ignoring my messages her words she kept to my messages okay cool all right wow Okay, cool. Yeah, well, do you know what's amazing is um, when you get to the point where your only responsibility, if you like, is writing a text message to somebody else. After that, nothing to do with you. If somebody isn't responding to you, that's up to them. For whatever reason, that's nothing to do with you. So your decisions are, am I going to keep contacting somebody who's ignoring me? Or am I just going to just let it let it go? Um, because for somebody to not only ignore you and then tell you she's ignored you, wow, what kind of place was she in? Not maybe, but she knows she's in an icky place. But um, if I was ignoring somebody, I don't think I'd... You see, I think in order to ignore somebody, you have to really want to ignore somebody. Saying, shit, I forgot, which is generally where I'm at. Oh, my God. I know I read it, but then I fell asleep. Or then I'm like... And I had a wee and forgot, you know, that's generally the case. But to actually, she, those words to me, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but that would mean, uh, that would be somebody purposely trying to help me to make sure that me ignoring them had hurt them. So if someone says to me, yeah, I did. I was ignoring you. That to me is words that want to hurt me for whatever reason. And somebody wants to hurt somebody else right at the beginning. We said, that's them. That's all about them. It's not about you, which is, it's about them and their need to see reaction and see hurt. Um, so yeah, you, you can say, mm, okay, cool, whatever. Um, and in the moment, it's like when you text somebody, you know, back in the day when you'd like, oh, I want him to call me. I wish my boyfriend would call me. He's not calling. No, I'll call him again. <laughs> you know, you're putting your happiness literally in someone else's control. And so especially if, you know, we want someone to call us or contact us. Yes, I agree. That's why I didn't respond. Yeah, but it did feel hurt. Okay, so 
I would then, yeah, do you know what? It hurts when someone tries to hurt me. It, it, it hurts. Okay, so why does it hurt? And it's literally saying, even though it really hurts, you know, I accept myself anyway, even though, God, that was mean. And you might want to have a bit of a cry and release what that actually meant to you. You know, um, because if somebody can hurt you, that hurt is already in you as well. Like, if she said, yeah, I was ignoring you, and you, like, genuinely didn't care, like, I now, if somebody said I'm ignoring you, I'm like, well, been, all right, easy. I mean, I wouldn't actually mind, because I think, well, gosh, that's their shit now. It wouldn't even, yeah, I mean, if any, I, I, I'm trying to think if anyone said, yeah, I mean, I've, I've had people try, like, um, my ex tried to hurt me the last week, saying all these awful things, like, oh, okay, cool, you're right, like, you're right, because... If you're trying to hurt me, that must mean you're feeling hurt. You know, to me, it's like, I don't even see it as an attack anymore. I think, oh, okay, maybe maybe this isn't a, a great friendship or relationship to have if you're actively seeking to hurt me. That, to me, doesn't seem very nice. And, you know, maybe... Oh. But I would actually see where are you already feeling that? Because if somebody can hurt you, you're already feeling hurt. So... Hurt in what way? What did it make you feel? What do you feel because of those words and those actions? What did it bring up in you? And that's what you need to deal with. Not, It's not her fault that you got hurt. It's not her fault. It's not your fault, actually. There's no fault or blame. In so, but she brought something out that was already in you. Does that make sense? You couldn't have felt hurt by something unless it was already there. No one can affect you unless you're already feeling it. Um... I don't know if this might, if this might make it, so, say you're a little bit, oh, I'm going to have a coffee, pissed off, gonna, leaving, right, I'm going, going to a coffee shop, pissed off, oh, having your coffee, having your, and then somebody, say the waiter comes over, the waiter or coffee barista or whatever comes over, trips up and pours something on you, oh, for fuck's sake, what are you that for? Now, did you go there looking for a fight? Right. If you hadn't stormed out of home in a foul mood, gone sat down there, pissed on the phone, drink my coffee, if you hadn't done all that, would that, would you have had the same reaction to that guy or girl pouring coffee or dropping something? No. Often we are looking, we are looking to vent, we are looking to release something on, to unleash on somebody and we're just looking for a reason, we are looking for an excuse. Fuck you, cut me up, you... Do you know what I mean? But, like, if you hadn't got into that car slightly miffed, you wouldn't, you know, oh, yeah, it's a bit... Oh, God's sake, don't cause an accident, you twonk. But you wouldn't be like... Mm. Amanda, road rage, huge, because people get into the car angry, yeah? So, yeah, you didn't respond. But what you did was keep it in. You can respond saying, personally, I mean, you know, as a measured response, you could say, um... I'm not sure what that was about, but I didn't I didn't appreciate that. So um, you want to ignore me? That's I mean, you, you you could say a response now. You don't have without blaming, without blame. I mean, I had somebody um, somebody who wanted to date me, and I was really like, you know, it's not it's not what I want. Oh my goodness, I got called the c word and everything. I'm like, I said, well, I really appreciate. Maybe you're going through some stuff this is not a friendship that's going to honour me and I can't honour you. I don't want to be friends with somebody who can talk to me like that. So as much as I care about what you're going through in your life, we're through. Our friendship is done because I do not want to be in that position and I don't deserve to be in that position. And you know what? I can't be the friend I want to be to you because I would be guarded and I'm not guarded. I am literally free as a bird. So the people who I, I choose to bring into my life I do not have to have any guards up because I don't want to. So I choose I choose to release you from our friendship. Um, I mean, and that felt so amazing because of all the stuff I'd gone through. I I had a I had a, a, one of my belief one of my beliefs was I'm always going to be left. I'm I'm always going to be left alone. I don't know where that came from. Well, it comes from previous life, but we, I digress. But. Um, and I, I always struggle to let people go who are bad for me because I'd rather have anything. I'll grabby, grabby, grabby onto anything than have nothing. So I ended up with a lot of very toxic people because they like being grabbed onto when you're desperate. 
So when I, I said, I release you from this, I mean, I said that in my head, because he might have said, he said, go read a book. Whenever I said something in slightly intelligent, he said, go and read. Really kind of rude, but it was really great insight for me to say, Are we, okay, we're done. You don't get to, I won't accept that. Therefore, I won't accept it. Therefore, I'm not trying to change you. I'm walking away. I did not once say, don't you dare treat me like that. How dare you speak to me like that? I, no, you cannot speak to me like that. I say, I don't like being spoken to like that. Therefore, I'm walking away. I never once asked him to change. I never once asked him to treat me differently. I, I thought, do you know what? You, you make your decisions and I make mine. My actions are to walk away, not to tell you not to do something. Does that make any sense? I can't change anyone else. I'm not even going to try, but I can change me and I can make my own choices. And the control you there, and do you know something? When you actually say, no, I don't take this. You are not changing them. You are changing you. And the, the literally the power inside you grows. Um, and you realize how much power and control you have. And they're big words, power and control, but they resonate with me so much because I used to feel powerless and completely out of control. Um, as in, I thought I had none and I felt somebody else could come in and completely change my world. And I was always waiting for somebody else to either make me happy or sad. And to know that I am only happy or sad because of what's inside me, irrelevant of what goes on outside of me, is is an absolutely amazing thing. But you have to want that. You have to want that kind of control. And a lot of people don't. It's quite a lot easier being a victim in your own life. And that's not me having a go, but a lot of people I speak to would rather blame somebody else for how they feel in their life than take full ownership of it. Um, and that's okay, like, that's fine. It's just a reality that is definitely a reality. Hi! Um, so, I hope that has made, it's just a really big subject, and this morning I got the urge to talk about it. Hey, Sarah, how are you? Gosh. <laughs> you missed it all. I went like, <laughs> you can watch it again, it's fine. Um, so, I hope that, is it's just quite it, I, again I don't ha write I know what I need gonna need to say but I don't write massive scripts as you might be able to tell um so I just wanted to really reiterate what is how we get control um but when we are in this panic mode I cannot tell you how much the EFT side of it it is is it saved me and my life <laughs> and like I can't bare bones about it and it's the one thing you can do yourself you don't need someone you don't need to go to a doctor you don't need to go to a, a physiotherapist you can literally get yourself out of emotional danger in the moment all on your own heart math that's what we're gonna say right so heart math breathing so we talk about we've got talking about your friend I hope that makes sense about your friend I'm literally trying to like change <laughs> on my phone by doing the mouse on my laptop I'm I've obviously <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously in a long day. Right, heart math breathing. Really quick, hope you've got a few more minutes, guys. So, hand on your heart. Easiest breathing. Right, so, re oh, right, blah, 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 blah. Quick recap. Heart math is really cool because our heart reads energy before our brain and our body, okay? So, when we walk into a room and we go, ooh, it's a bit icky in here, your heart's reading vibration. It's saying to your brain, oh, my God, oh, my God, it's, uh, let's run, let's shake, Let's panic. Let's have a sore tummy. Whatever you read in the room, your bod your brain will then tell your body how to react. But it all comes into your heart. Okay, so heart math breathing. Um, if you then hand on your heart, okay? Do this with me because it'll just make you feel good. So why not? <laughs> right. Okay, so heart math breathing. Breathe in for, for six. So breathe in. Two, three, four, five. Six, pause, and release. Two, three, four, five, six, and again. Breathe in. Two, three, four, five, six, pause, and release. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, this time when you keep going, now breathe in and breathe in something that just made you smile, a, a, a happy a happy thought, breathe it into your heart, yeah? And then release, two, three, four, five, 
six. Again, now breathe it in. That lovely happy thought, breathe it in for six. Pause. And release. This time as you're breathing in that happy thought, bring in the colour that resonates into your heart. Pause. And release. And as you're breathing that thought, turn that colour into your heart. Pause. Hold it there and then release, but send it now through your body. So breathe in the happy thought, breathe in the colour and pause. And then release it through your body. <sighs> okay. This, and you just do this, and it's literally heart math breathing. You, what you're doing is you're equalising your heart, your 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 heart vibration, your brain waves, and your body bodily vibrational body. I can't remember what it's all called because um, that would be handy. Um, but that you literally equalize so every your literally your heart spirit soul body mind are all working on this beautiful kind of level playing field rather than your heart being like Ooh. the minute you calm your heart your head and your body have to follow your heart is king your heart does everything we have to take care of our heart it's the one thing we don't know why it starts and stops mainly we don't know why it does it we're just glad that it does and so we have to talk uh, it's really important. Our hearts, are, our hearts are the epicenter of everything. Like we bring love through our heart. We really do. It literally pumps life into us all day, every day. And so, whatever pumps life into us, we need to hold in very hard regard, high regard. So, um, heart math breathing. Breathe into your heart. And we have three trillion cells in our body, guys. So when we're breathing into our heart releasing to those three trillion cells is um beautiful you can then if you want to i don't so i like to make it easy so if you love that go, all right all right yeah we're doing it you can then um do grounding and when you're breathing out you can then send roots out your feet i do love doing meditations and i get my, my voice goes very deep and whooshy sounds i should do a meditation get everyone off <sighs> <laughs> um i do actually do you know i do actually offer med i have like a little i, I don't sell it anymore because i just i just still don't want to um but i put meditations as well i put them i put that i'm gonna put a little bundle of meditations that i've already recorded together as well into my um my group so there you go sarah if you want some meditations meditation by lucy um they'll be in the um in the group soon in the program soon so if you want them they'll be there i'm gonna add them on soon okay so has anybody got any questions? There we go. Say, so, yeah, you're like, yeah, all right. Lucy's voice a bit more. All right. Like every day isn't enough. <laughs> um, I keep getting told though how nice my voice is, right? And that's why I've, I've done a podcast. I literally thought, have I got a nice voice? I've got, I've got literally a voice for radio. Right. I'll create my own channel then. So I literally, I did my first podcast today. I'm very happy. I keep getting told that I should talk more like this. A that or a chat room. I'm going to go for podcast first. Anyway, uh, no. Has anybody got any questions when it comes to control and things? While you're typing, because there'll be so many questions coming in. Um, just always remember what is yours. And everything you do, say, um, feel and think. You could, listen, uh, you could listen to me all day. Well... I'll get you onto my podcast then, Julie. <laughs> um, um, if um, oh, God, oh, maybe you'll, maybe oh, that's really that's so kind. I'm really. I'm, well, do you know what? If it helps, then that this is what I'm here to do: is to um, talk up, talk from my heart, and talk from my intuition, and talk from my knowledge as well. But if you um, always remember, um, always have there that everything you act, react um feel think it's all yours it is all yours and although that might feel like uh but they can't do that they can do what the fuck they want seriously they can do what they want so can you and when you have when you realize that everything you do is yours and everything else is nothing everything else about those things are all yours they are all yours to control and that is it that is all you have responsibility for. Your whole life is that. That's all you can do. Everything else, nothing to do with you. And like I said, that does come into ego, which is a whole nother 
I think it's a lot deeper level about this, but once you get into that, then you start letting that not have an effect. So like your friend being mean to you is like, well, that's nothing, that really has nothing to do with me. Therefore, it can't affect me because that's my choice to be affected or not. And if it is, if I am, where ego comes in, if I am letting someone else's behavior of to me affect me, I'm making their issues about me. Therefore, what's that about? My ego. So... On, the, on that wonderfully pleasurable note, um, if you want to, I've talked about it a little bit, um, not too much, but I've talked about my um, the weekly tapping that we're doing. If you want to join that, um, just send me a DM, I'll send you the link to that. If you want more information about my deep dive, I haven't really talked about that at all this time, let me know. It's all on the this Life Made Easy as well. It's all here. So anything you want more information about, be it meditations, be it about anything, literally drop me a message. And if you want to have even more of me, <laughs> now, hi Claire. Um, I am. Um, I do. I do. As, I do loads of uh, free stuff, but I do have some awesome paid programs too that you are more than welcome to join. Um, so, if there is anything else you need, let me know. If not, thank you for your time. I am so grateful for you guys showing up, and I'm so grateful for the opportunity to um, be there. So thank you so much, and I'm sure I will see you really, 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 really soon. Mwah! All my love.